So this session is on material design. So I therefore prefer, prepared my um, talk piecing together uh, different results from projects that are um, ongoing uh, together with uh, my two students, Sever and Philip, who are also sitting in the audience now. Um, then other projects um, done in collaboration with uh, uh, friends and colleagues, uh, for instance, Dom Domenico Di Sante in Würzburg, uh, the people in Vienna, Alessandro and Carsten. Then I will present towards the end something on transition metal decal coach nights done with Tim and Rosa in our German uh, research uh, collaboration. And also with uh, with Jan Bodich and Björn Trautset. So essentially, I will be elaborating on um, whether we can uh, always interpret uh, the lifting of orbitals in many body systems as a renormalization of single particle Newtonian parameters, or if there is uh, more to that. And uh, um, things can be already. Uh, understood uh, um, by making the example of the uh, nickel heterostructures. So I'm talking about the pre-D9 nickel age of superconductivity that Har Guang uh, yesterday presented. Uh, so here we have more D7 to D9 physics, and uh, we are talking about the splitting between two orbitals, two EG orbitals, a planar one and an out of plane. And uh, this is something, of course, that uh, many of you guys have been also looking at. Uh, so the effect of uh, many body uh, correlations onto this uh, split uh, multiplet. And essentially, we interpret things um, in terms of a very simple uh, renormalization of the uh, DFT uh, crystal field that I show here um, by means of the real part of the self energy at zero frequency. And we can typically have just two uh, situations, two opposite situation. One in which the, the crystal field splitting by DFT is uh, uh, increased by the, DMF, by the self energy correction. And instead a, a situation in which the uh, many body correlation oppose uh, the tendency of uh, uh, the original tendency of DFT. Um, so the, First, uh, essentially, uh, the first example will be uh, covered in, my, in the first part of my talk uh, by looking at uh, oxide nitro structures. And instead, that we will see, I will present uh, one example of the second uh, scenario uh, where, when, I'm, when I'll be discussing about correlated um, topological insulators and twisted by layer transition metal decal cogenides. Um, so the question will be whether we can always use this very simple equation, a single particle equation that you see down, down there. Um, so you have seen already in the previous talk by Divine how uh, still active this field is. Um, heterostructure give possibilities to realize the, uh, phases that are not present in the bulk constituents, uh, in particular uh, by reducing the thickness, um, we have seen the example of the manganite in Divine's talk. Instead, I will be also discussing this thickness induced metal insulator transition, but in uh, um, uh, vanadium and in iridium compounds. Um, either we discuss this in terms of the EG um, manifold. Uh, in, in case of late transition metal oxides. Uh, the first example that I will be showing is instead in the T2G case where uh, breaking, the breaking of the um, translational invariance along Z um, uh, makes the otherwise degenerate in the bulk degenerate T2G orbitals um, differentiate and uh, uh, pushes up in energy the out of plane um, orbitals. So this is uh, what happens in the uh, good old friend strontium vanadate? Um, in this case, uh, you see an, ex a, an experiment, the results of an experiment of a Japanese group um, who have uh, shown how, uh, by going from the bulk uh, case, so bu uh, building a thick strontium vanadate 
film on top of strontium titanate um, and reducing this n, the number of layers, you lose progressively, but uh, well, actually not progressively, abruptly between three and two, um, the quasi-particle peak uh, of strontium titanate. And the question was, uh, what is the mechanism behind this? And it's exactly this enhancement of the crystal field uh, splitting that I was uh, mentioning before. So that's what DFT tells us. Imagine here you have your slab, just take the example of n equal two. Um, so the, um, you see there is still a, a metallic, this is still a metallic system, but you already see uh, the differentiation between x, y and y, z and x, z, the blue, orbitals start to be split and develop some quantum well features. And uh, uh, the question is whether the MFT can finish the job and uh, uh, get the job done and uh, make it uh, insulating. The answer uh, is yes. In this case, we have studied exactly this, uh, this thickness dependent transition. Uh, you see very clearly that the DMFT enhances uh, this crystal is splitting uh, by making by making the uh, y z and uh, x z orbitals completely empty, and so that's this orbital polarization uh, occurring at the interface is less pronounced in the second layer, so in the interface layer, and uh, um, since this happens uh, via a very abrupt. Uh, uh, dependence you see here uh, depicted on the on the right hand side the the correction to the to the crystal fist splitting as a function of the interaction parameter and uh, contrary to what a Hartree Fock uh, calculation would tell you uh, so Hartree -Fock in, in Hartree you would get the real part of this energy which is linear in U and linear in N DMFT instead gives you a highly nonlinear uh, kind of first order behavior um, making this object very sensitive to small changes. So for instance, in our DMFT calculation, so we uh, immediately got a metal at n equal three, uh, pressure, strain, temperature, were all going uh, towards uh, metallization, driving the system to metallic metallization. So in any case, this mechanism that I've shown at the beginning is here really very clear and active. Um, the story, however, on strontium vanadate thin film is not, uh, is not over. Um, recent experiments here done in Würzburg in the uh, group of Raf Claesen um, showed that um, the um, first, they, they, they looked at the at the bare uh, vanadium, uh, sunsium vanadate uh, film uh, termination, and uh, they discovered a very strong, uh, they, they measured a very strong tendency towards uh, oxidation, over oxidation. So, in particular, they, they see that the, term, the vanadium O2 termination that they get in pulse laser deposition um, gets modified by a square root two, by square root two uh, oxygen reconstruction. So every second vanadium, you get an oxygen that completes the octahedron. And this, of course, gives you a D0 contribution. And to uh, get rid of that, um, they uh, cap the system with strontium titanate again, and restoring the uh, D1 uh, vanadium nominal valence. And to their very big surprise, they shift, they push this uh, thickness induced transition to much larger values. So now this X is the end of the Japanese experiment and it's, not, uh, it's no longer two, but it's uh, around six, seven. So the, 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 the film with, uh, even with N equals six are still insulating, which is very surprising um, in some sense because in DFT plus DFT at least you clearly see that at this thicknesses, you are extremely close to bulk uh, strontium vanadate. Um, just to give you a, 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 an idea how sensitive things uh, are um, in this, uh, when you have this enhancement of the crystal pipitin that can be of, of first order, um, I show you two uh, 
calculations. The, the left one is on uh, strontium O termination. And here the crystal field splitting uh, by DFT is negative. And the sign of the crystal field splitting in DFT is very important because it determines the, uh, in which direction the enhancement of the MFT goes. So here, if you do the MFT, you get uh, that the XZ and YZ orbitals uh, go up and get, get emptied. Whereas uh, if you do it here in an ideal vanadium O2 termination, you get not a huge difference uh, in, the, in the band structure. So you still get that gamma in XY pocket, but the crystal field splitting has changed its, its sign. And uh, in this case, DMFT, which you see at the, in the bottom panel, would uh, empty the XY orbital immediately. So we are working with uh, our friends in Vienna to see whether we can understand this uh, surprising enhancement of the critical thickness uh, in terms of uh, very subtle um, structural relaxation effects that change this crystal field splitting and then the, the response of the MFT. Um, thickness dependent uh, transition happens also in uh, more complex oxides. Here I show the uh, case of the iridium uh, films. Um, of course, here we have also a spin orbit coupling that we have to take into account. Uh, the Claisen group realized these films uh, and uh, they are able to uh, by reducing the thickness uh, to get rid of the um, of the metallic weight at the Fermi level. Uh, here, concomitantly, uh, and we can describe this very nicely uh, with DFT plus U, uh, concomitantly we get, you get a change of the structure. So in some sense, when you, when you make the uh, film, the iridium film thinner, uh, you see the, um, that the tiltings of the octahedra present in 113 iridium go away. So strontium titanate is a tilting killer in this sense. And, um, and we think that concomitantly there is also magnetic uh, fluctuations changing dramatically uh, that are also either responsible or are an effect of this uh, um, the consequence of this uh, metal insulated transition. Essentially, uh, you can think of this as a, a very effective way of going from the 214 bulk uh, in the thin case to a 113 um, bulk uh, iridium uh, um, in the thick limit, uh, as it has been described, uh, for instance, in DMFT by Chris Naule here. And uh, the 214 is indeed uh, insulating and magnetic, and the 113 is uh, a correlated metal. Um, this interplay between spin orbit, structural distortion, and magnetism is also common to many other um, late transition metal oxides, 5D in particular. And you can see this afternoon, uh, if you are interested, um, something more on that, uh, but on the osmates uh, by uh, severing his poster. Um, here, it's also interesting to ask uh, uh, what happens to the, really to the termination. Of course, since you are, you're looking at such thin films, of course, the termination is very important. And here, what happens is not uh, um, what was observed in, in the vanadium case, uh, namely a termination conservation, be because in laser pulse deposition, they, they, they essentially shoot um, entire unit cells. So if, you, if your strontium titanate is terminated with titanium O2, you should end up with iridium O2. Um, uh, here instead, uh, um, oxidation of iridium O2 leads to iridium O3, which is very prone to evaporate. And so uh, the actual termination is the strontium O termination, which is the one we usually uh, naively, without thinking, take into account in DFT calculations. Uh, here is, a, th this is due to this termination conversion, something that is uh, very well known in the rutinate case, where there is also this doubling of the read oscillation leading to a termination conversion. And we have checked um, with Domenico um, that, uh, um, indeed, uh, um, experiments are much better described if we uh, use this termination rather than the um, nominal one or the one that you would get in the case of the conservation. Good. So, um, so far I've discussed these two 
the, the case of the announcement of the crystal field splitting, um, when do we get the other, uh, the other possibility? Namely, when do we get a opposing effect of the, uh, uh, of the many body correction to the crystal field? And this is, is still taking our example, initial example of the uh, nucleolateral structures. This is obtained when you um, raise the filling from uh, one electron in the EGs to two electrons, so when you go to D8, um, because in that case, the Huns coupling starts to become uh, uh, much uh, stronger and uh, uh, wants to create a high spin uh, triplet mod insulator in the ground state. And so it effectively reduces the splitting uh, of the, of the uh, DFT. So um, to study that, I um, considered a model that in, in its origin is uh, completely uncorrelated, so semiconductor, mercury telluride. The BHZ model is a, a two orbital model, half filled, two orbitals here and two electrons. So everything is, this, uh, is described by these two by two blocks and in particular by this D vector that is written in the um, uh, space of the uh, two by two poly matrices in the orbitals. And uh, the way this D vector uh, winds around the Boolean zone tells you whether you have a so-called non-inverted band structure. So imagine your M is very large. Uh, so in this case, uh, you don't uh, wind around the unit sphere. So that's, uh, that's a churn number equal zero. Uh, whereas if M is equal, to, uh, is smaller than two, then the D vector uh, will wind, uh, will cover once the unit sphere, and you have a so-called inverted band structure in which the S orbital um, in conduction uh, uh, at the gamma point uh, starts to have a little bit of weight uh, in uh, valence. Um, so this topological phase transition happens as a function of M in a very smooth way without uh, interaction and our motivation was whether to uh, where, whether we can we can trigger this uh, uh, by means of electronic correlation with the effect that I've described uh, before. So that's a, the one of the most general um, ways of writing a two by two uh, a two orbital uh, Coulomb interaction. Um, in this case, without spin flip and pair up in terms, it's not decisive here. Um, the only thing that I want you to focus on is this uh, uh, opposing uh, tendency of the uh, many body correction. So we really get this high spin here. Everything can be described by this zero order correction that I've uh, discussed so far. And the first consequence of this is indeed that uh, we go from the trivial band insulator um, we can go into the quantum spinal phase, uh, into the topological insulating phase, not by decreasing M as uh, for U equals zero, but increasing the Coulomb interaction. So this is a, a schematic phase diagram based on our DMFT uh, results uh, uh, solved by uh, our CT Hive uh, um, Monte Carlo. And uh, um, essentially, this is already a, a nice uh, result that you can induce topological phases by increasing U, but there is more to that. You see these colors. So in particular, in the quantum spinal phase, you see a very strong change of color. And this color is indeed the thing that is more to, to our single particle renormalization. So um, look at the... Uh, Let's look at the, the self energy, really, not just this, Z, not, not just take this zero value, uh, zero frequency value. So, if we do that, uh, we distinguish very clearly between uh, uh, Hartree Fock like uh, self energies that are really flat, and where, so for instance, here in this part of the phase diagram, where we really can discuss uh, things in terms of renormalization uh, of our M orbital splitting parameter. Right, thank you. Uh, but if we, if we go deep into this uh, um, more correlated regime, then we, we start to uh, observe a very strong and pronounced frequency dependence. So the correction is no longer a static object and the color is exactly proportional to this uh, many body uh, qu uh, quantity, many body nature. 
So the system is uh, actually trying to go to connect a trivial bending insulator, which is always Hartree-Fock-like, um, here with something that is also Hartree-Fock-like, so the, this transition is smooth and second order S for U equals zero, whereas here, uh, the topological phase transition happens uh, with a gap uh, that uh, abruptly uh, gets inverted. So a jump in the, in the gap inversion, similarly to other um, uh, cases also discussed by McDonald. So uh, the consequence is very interesting. Uh, so, uh, namely, you get a semi-metal if you cross the bent touching point for small u, whereas if you go above this uh, quantum three critical point, so the end of a first order line, um, you get uh, the, the end of a second order line, you get uh, 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 the, the chair number change, or the C2 invariant that change, just, but not a semi-metallic uh, bulk uh, phase. So this is uh, uh, also trans translatable to the uh, Kane Mel language. Here the orbital splitting is uh, a segment of mass between A and B, which is here. I still call it M, uh, contrary to the original notation by Kane Mele. Uh, this, is, this term breaks inversion symmetry and brings you to a trivial phase after beyond a critical value. So you get this typical onion uh, in uh, uh, Rashba versus seven of mass diagram. And uh, um, the interaction that you would introduce here is, is simpler. It's just a, a, a typical Hubbard uh, single orbital interaction, but it does the same job. So it suppresses the staggered potential that you can start from and induces uh, a, a topological phase transition here in this uh, uh, DMFT uh, phase diagram as well. Um, why did I bring the Kane Mele uh, model? Well, uh, the point is that we have in mind a very specific material realization of all that. Um, and this is indeed uh, transition metal decalcogenides, tantalum diselenide. Um, this is uh, um, a, a system that in the monolayer uh, 1T phase, uh, has uh, a uh, so-called um, Star of David uh, uh, reconstruction, charge density wave is a commensurate charge density wave, instability, and you see from the top here, the uh, tantrum atoms, uh, they form these stars. And uh, um, the nice thing is that you can uh, bilayer or trilayer them. And uh, by doing that, uh, you turn, you change a very, clearly the band structure of the Star of David phase. This um, is shown down here, so that's the monolayer. It has a very nicely isolated and super flat uh, tantalum D band um, out of this. Even despite the complication of the unit cell, somehow you have a very simple low energy uh, structure. And if you uh, bilayer this uh, by making um, the stacking such that the top uh, layer, um, the, the star of David in the top layer sit exactly in the middle of three uh, star of David in, in the bottom, then you uh, do something that you can sort of describe like the, hop, the opposite that you do in, in bilayer, in twisted bilayer graphene. Because now you set this very localized MOT uh, electrons, you set them free, uh, to have a honeycomb dispersion. So you see you open now up a nice honeycomb dispersion when you bilayer these things and you can even twist this by 180 degrees for instance and open a salmon of mass so a gap uh, because of the breaking of inversion symmetry that you have in these 180 twisted bilayers. So that's a very interesting uh, um, uh, way of uh, working with these Dirac fermions. Uh, here you break the inversion symmetry, then the D6 uh, symmetry of, of the graphene layer, in that you not only have, uh, um, you, you, you essentially have a, a breaking of the sublattice uh, equivalence, therefore you not only generate the typical Kane Mele SOC uh, spin orbit coupling term, uh, but you also get this uh, so-called spin valley term in which uh, um, you have only the spin and the KK prime polymetrics. Uh, 
uh, which deforms the onion this way. You see here, you, it breaks uh, the symmetry and, and, and you lose progressively this uh, quantum sphenoid phase. The nice thing, however, is that you can, you, we can sweep through the onion very effectively by applying a, a, an electric field along Z in this, in this case. So we estimate the U. In these bilayers, we get uh, something that is four to five times the hopping uh, integral. So the system is really uh, strongly correlated. It sits close to this uh, three critical point. And this is realized in uh, this uh, very beautiful experiment uh, by Michael, Mike Cromie. Um, the only thing is that the stacking is slightly different. It's not this perfect honeycomb stacking, but rather a so-called AC stacking, which the star of Davids are sitting on top of each other. Um, this, our, our stacking uh, is a, a metastable uh, phase. So we are uh, figuring out whether uh, we can also get from experiment signals of the of our uh, stacking. So the, the, the message, however, is that in this uh, phase diagram, uh, tantalum disenonide bilayers are sitting here and we can operate um, through this, uh, through this uh, transitions by uh, applying electric field in a very efficient way. So to conclude, I uh, showed you the different possibilities that you have in heterostructures, in oxide heterostructures, uh, in particular thickness induced metal insulated transitions. And uh, uh, in the end, uh, uh, this local criticality in the uh, correlated topological insulators that can be realized by, uh, by layers of transition metal decal coach lines. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we have time for a few questions. So uh, I would like to start with one. Uh, so you showed these uh, beautiful DMFT calculations with a uh, with few different transition metals in a heterostructure, right? Um, yeah. So was there, I, I, I know asking about double counting is never kind, but uh, was there anything particularly troublesome about double counting in these calculations? <laughs> or did right. Thank you. Thank you for these questions. So in principle, uh, actually, here you should, um, um, take into account, uh, um, if you want, orbital. I mean, in the moment in which, in which you are uh, splitting two orbitals, you should wonder whether you should put a double count in there. And uh, um, in principle, if you use an all-electron um, DFT code, uh, you should do it because the, the radial part uh, for, um, for the different orbital, the radial part of the wave function would be different here. We are using uh, um, VASP uh, where um, there is no uh, such, um, I mean, the, the radial part would be different. They would be the same uh, among them. So we can avoid uh, putting an orbital dependent double counting. Uh, but uh, I mean, this is a subtle issue. So it depends indeed also how you, it depends what one considers as bare, you know? I, I, I showed here DFT, uh, Chris F is splitting, but this is not really the bare one. So here you get uh, oxygen uh, contribution, not only the metal, madelon potential, but also this radial contribution of the wave function. So that also depends on how you, you extract that. Thank you. And yes, please. For the STO SVO, do you see any evidence for titanium states and, and what is metal charge transfer? Yeah. Could, could you hear the question? Uh, maybe please repeat it. Um, for the STO SVO yeah. uh, here, do you see any evidence of charge transfer? Did yeah. you ask yes. uh, near the interface? Yes, yes. We, we get a little bit of titanium states. Um, um, the, the, let's see, um, the, in, in experiments, they, they, they don't, uh, I mean, it's very hard, you know, uh, to, to go and, and check whether really the titanium uh, um, four plus uh, signal is there. So in, 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 in the DMFT calculation, uh, we definitely get a little bit of titanium. Uh, um, I mean, we, yeah. That's the short answer. Maybe we can discuss uh, later some details. OK. 
Okay. Um, maybe one more quick question. Well, it is lunchtime here, so I see that yeah. <laughs> we have to leave. So uh, let us thank Giorgio once again.